Hi, did you know that these old Samsung smartphones are very special? The Galaxy S9, Note 9, S10 and the Note 10 series all have a camera feature which is very similar to what you would find on a proper mirrorless or a DSLR camera lens. Well, let me actually show you. But before we dive into the video, you must absolutely know the basics of how the camera works on your smartphone. Well, the thing is, the camera on your smartphone works in pretty much the same way as a mirrorless camera. There's the image sensor and on top of it, there's a lens. The real magic happens in the lens which collects light and focuses it onto the camera sensor which ultimately allows you to take photos. And it's pretty much the same concept on your smartphone, it's just smaller and the lenses aren't interchangeable. But the working principle is almost identical. And fun fact, your smartphone has almost the same basic components as any of these interchangeable camera lenses. Well, that was until this phone, which is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. You see, this phone along with the S9, Note 9 and the S10 Plus are all special because these phones have something called the variable aperture in their camera lenses. You can actually see the aperture blade move inside the lens of the Note 10 Plus. That's awesome. This is the same thing that you would find in one of these proper camera lenses. And you can see the aperture move inside of this mirrorless camera lens. Thing is, this feature is not limited to interchangeable lenses. You see, this old point and shoot camera from Sony also has a variable aperture. And cramming all of that inside of a tiny phone camera, well, that is an engineering marvel. And this is something Samsung eventually got rid of, so their newer phones like the S24 series doesn't have a variable aperture. So that makes all of these phones quite special. Now you may ask, what is the point of having a variable aperture on your phone? Well, remember at the starting of the video, I told you that the lens collects light and focuses it onto the camera sensor. And one of the ways that you can control the amount of light that shines onto the sensor is by adjusting the aperture in your camera lens. And lastly, it also allows you to control the amount of background blur in your photos and videos. I'm gonna explain and demonstrate both first using the camera and then the phone. Alright, so we're gonna select the manual mode on the camera and start by increasing the aperture value. And you'll notice that selecting a higher aperture value closes the aperture cutting down the light that shines onto your camera sensor. And that is gonna make your photos and videos darker. Now, if we move to a lower value, you'll notice that the aperture opens up, allowing more light to shine on the sensor, giving you brighter photos and videos. And this exact same concept applies to your smartphone. I'm gonna have to demonstrate on the S10 Plus because my Note 10 Plus has a non-functional screen. Alright, so on the phone, we're gonna switch to the Pro Mode because this is where you get to control the aperture. And here, you've got two settings for the aperture. So right now we've got the aperture set to the higher value and that is f2.4. And you can see right now the aperture is closed. So that's going to cut down the amount of light giving us underexposed photos. But changing this to f1.5 is going to open the aperture up allowing more light and also giving us brighter photos and videos. So you can see the concept is exactly the same as you would find on a proper camera lens. And also keep in mind that the shutter speed and the ISO are set to manual for demonstration or else the phone is going to automatically adjust the brightness using the shutter and the ISO. Now this is the part where things get very interesting because using the aperture you can control the amount of background blur you want in your photos and videos. Let me give you a demonstration. Alright, so this is our setup and we're going to keep the ISO and the shutter speed set to auto because we don't want the brightness of the video to change as we adjust the aperture. And I want you to pay attention to the LEDs back there. So right now we've got the phone set to f1.5. That means the aperture is fully open and this is going to give you a shallow depth of field and that translates into better background blur. 
and f2.4 is going to give you a deeper depth of field and that is going to decrease the amount of background blur in your videos newer phones do this in the software using ai but the s10 plus has an actual mechanical aperture in the lens pretty cool right i really want to see samsung bringing this feature back on their newer smartphones now that said, I think I know why Samsung got rid of this feature from their newer smartphones. One of the obvious reasons is, well, cost cutting. You see, the thing is, this is a complex mechanism and obviously it adds to the cost, so it kind of makes sense for them to get rid of it to save some pennies. Secondly, the lenses have improved quite a bit since the S10 Plus to the point where the S24 Ultra with its f1.7 aperture main camera does better bokeh compared to the S10 Plus's f1.5 lens. I mean take a look for yourself. This video was recorded on the S24 Ultra and this is on the S10 Plus and once again going back to the S24 Ultra. So see the difference? The video coming out of the S24 Ultra is impressive. The only downside of not having a variable aperture is that you cannot control the amount of bokeh in your photos and videos on the go. I actually used to record these videos on the Note 10 Plus with the f2.4 aperture because that kinda makes everything in focus, even the background. I'm using an external monitor to demonstrate because the screen of my Note 10 Plus, well, it kinda doesn't work anymore. But you kinda get the idea where you wanna use the f2.4 value. So this is one of the use case scenarios that I can think of and I'm gonna alternate between f1.5 and f2.4 and you can clearly see how the background blurs when i select f1.5 and f2.4 makes everything appear in focus and if it's not obvious well you might have noticed that the number of f stops are quite limited on the phone because unlike a proper camera where you can set the aperture to multiple values here on the phone you just get two adjustment values that is f1.5 and f2.4 and that's it. So you don't really get much flexibility when it comes to the aperture on a smartphone. And the thing is, even a basic 1855 kit lens will give you better bokeh in your photos and videos. It's just the way it is. And if you use a lens which has a bigger aperture, well, this is the kind of photo that you can expect from this kind of a camera. And versus, this was taken on a phone. See the difference? So I think these two are the reasons why Samsung got rid of it. But that said, a photography buff like me would love to see this feature coming back on newer generation of Samsung Galaxies or heck, even iPhones because this is awesome. Oh, and a lot of you guys were asking me where are my wallpapers from? Well, I always use photos that I've taken myself. And if you want, you can grab them from my Flickr account. Alright, so I guess that wraps it up for this video. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. And this is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.